Today we're gonna take a photo, remove the background, add a new environment, and then color grade everything together. Hey there, my name is Ali, and this tutorial is gonna be a collaboration between me and my friend Kagdas Aslan. I'm gonna link his profile below. It's really amazing profile. Make sure you check him out. Okay, this is the photo he sent me. I wanted to change the background, like, but I liked actually this the idea of the mosque. So I decided I'll add a castle. So the first thing I did was actually like cut out the background from him. I did that by using the quick selection mode. I just picked the grass with it here and there. Then after that, I used uh, like the normal polygonal lasso tool and I started by holding shift to add, added a selection all around him. <coughs> and then I added layer mask. It came out like this. And of course, it was like something like that. I repositioned it and adjusted everything. Okay, so this is like the result of the cutting itself. Okay, the next thing I'm going to add this photo. This photo, I'm going to link it in the description. I'm going to add it in a new tab first. Then I'm gonna drag it till it's here. It's a little bit small, so I'm gonna press Ctrl T, make it like bigger so it matches the the environment. Okay. Okay. The first problem with that photo is that it's like let me create a new layer. The light is coming from this area, but for him. The light is coming from that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Ctrl T, right click, flip horizontal. So now the light and the castle, like the light, sorry, from the castle and the light on his face are matching. Okay. Let me pull this down a little bit, something like that. And we can actually make it a little bit smaller. Like that. Okay. To make sure it's exactly in the middle, first I'm going to close this one. To make sure it's exa exactly in the middle, I'm going to close everything, press Ctrl R, then hold that ruler and drag it till it snaps in the middle automatically. Then I'm going to open them again. And now I can exactly position him in the middle and position the castle also in the middle. Then if you want to get rid of this one, just hold it and move it to the absolute left, Ctrl R to remove. Okay, now we have everything. Now, the first thing I noticed about these two, the castle is too foggy and not contrasty, but him, his, he has a lot of contrast. So we need to bring them closer. So the first thing I need to remove a little bit of this fog because the fog is what removes the contrast. I'm going to use something called in the camera row filter, filter camera row filter. It's a little bit slow. I'm going to go to the FX module and something called dehaze. If you move it, it removes, like you can see, it removes the fog. And if you increase it, it adds more fog, decrease it. So I'm going to just increase it a little bit and press OK. Now it will automatically remove some of the fog and make it more contrasty. OK, now it's much better. We can do the opposite to him. Reduce his contrast a little bit by using curves. Link it below. And take the black points, move them a little bit up. Take the white points, move them a little bit down. So now he's less contrasty. Now they are matching much better. <clears throat> okay. One more thing. This is too bright, I guess, compared to him. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. Link it below. And then in the bright areas somewhere here, I'm going to pull this a little bit down. So it's a little bit dark and more matching him. Okay. I guess now we matched what is like the brightness <coughs> and the darkness, but then we need to match the colors a little bit. So from here we have some orange light. I need it to be like touching him. So I'm going to stand on in the model himself. I'm going to go to the curves adjustment layer. I'm going to brighten everything up. Then I'm going to go to the red. I'm going to add red a little bit. And to the blue, I'm going to add yellow because opposite of blue is yellow. Okay, but then I'm going to press Ctrl I, so it's invisible, and then using a white brush, I'm going to paint a little bit back from the curves adjustment on the edges of him. 
So now only the edges are having the orange color and the little bit of brightness we also added. Okay, so let's see the before and after. It's a small effect, but it's it makes it look really natural. You can also add another layer. Make sure just you press alt click to make sure it's linked below and using a brush and like this reddish orange color. You can just softly paint a little bit. Something like that. It's okay if it's too strong in the beginning. It's actually better to make it strong in the beginning because you can always reduce the opacity and change the blending mode. Okay, I'm gonna try overlay and soft light. Let's start with soft light and let's try overlay. Overlay, it's too strong. I'm gonna stay with soft light and then I'm gonna reduce the opacity to do something like that. So we have a little bit of orange here. Okay, looking good now. They are like nicely blended together. Let's try editing everything together now. I'm gonna add a curves adjustment on top of everything. And I always like to pull up the black, point, uh, black points, pull down the shadows, and take the highlights, try to make them even brighter, something like that. Okay, let's see, before and after. Okay, looking good. I'm gonna add another curves adjustment. Now I'm not gonna play with the RGB, I'm gonna color. <coughs> so I'm gonna go to the red. I'm gonna add red to the highlights, but like a little bit, and opposite of red is cyan. I'm not gonna add, of course, all of that. I'm gonna add just a little bit cyan opposite, so we have contrasting colors. Then in the blue channel, I'm gonna do exactly the same. Yellow in the highlights, but also a little bit small, and some blue in the shadows. Okay, now we're having like variety of colors. I always go to the green channel, not always I'm gonna use it, but I try and see what's gonna happen. If you add like magenta, how it's gonna look like. If you add green, how it's gonna look like. It's a matter of taste, but I like it this way. Okay. <clears throat> the last thing, I'm gonna do a gradient map. I'm gonna pick anyone with two colors. This one is fine. I'm gonna go to that color. I'm gonna change it to cyan. I'm gonna take something like that. Just like in the middle of the cyan. Then I'm gonna go with the orange, I'm gonna make it more reddish and brighter, something like that. Okay, then I'm gonna try changing it to overlay and to soft light. Soft light is more subtle, so I'm gonna stick with it. And of course, I'm gonna lower the opacity. This is 0%, I'm gonna add just a little bit, 23%, something like that. It just gives a tone to your entire image. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? We can create some sort of a vignette that will work nicely. I like to go to the brightness contrast or curves. I'll stick with curves this time. I'm just gonna take the midpoint, make it brighter. Press OK. Then I'm gonna press Control I. So now everything is doesn't apply the effect. It's completely black. Then using a white brush, I'll make it big. I'll lower the opacity a little bit. And I'm just gonna paint a little bit of the brightness in the middle. And maybe some of the brightness in that area. Because this is where we have the light. I'm gonna click again to make it even stronger where the model is. Okay, then what I'm gonna do, this is like very fast way to do the opposite. I'm gonna press Ctrl J. Now I made the duplicate exactly the same. Then Ctrl I. Now I inverted the layer mask. But I still need to invert this one from bright to dark. So now I darken the opposite. So what these two layers did is one of them brightens the middle part, the other one darkens everything except the middle part. Okay, I have these two. I can always like lower their opacity or leave them strong. I like them this way. Let's see the before and after. These two. So they created some sort of like a focus point at the middle where like the model is. Okay, you can also add birds, like, to add birds, just go and, li like, write birds, PNG, in Google. Or if you have, like, for me, I have brushes, so I can go and take any of my bird brushes here, and I can start, like, using a, a gray color, like, add birds, make them smaller. I have, like, several different types of birds. You can add them, you don't have to do it, like, just, I want to show you something related to Google. If you want to use any of these pictures, 
and you don't have their copyrights, just go to tools and go to usage right. Make sure they are labeled for reuse so you can use them and they're like for free. Okay. Okay, one last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Control, Alt, and Shift, which is Command, Option, and Shift, and press E. What this will do, it will merge everything into a new separate layer. So now I can go to Filter, Camera Row Filter, and edit everything in one go. Okay, so now, I, now we have everything. The first thing I'm gonna do is maybe like, I don't know if you like understand exactly the histogram, but these are burnt areas. I don't want a lot of burnt areas, missing detail. So I'm gonna pull my whites a little bit down. So I don't have any burn areas. Burn areas mean it's completely white. I don't want that. And I can go to the shadows. If I darken the shadows, it's gonna look much better, I guess. So I'm darkening the shadows a little bit. And then in the clarity, I'm gonna add some clarity. I actually have a tutorial, full tutorial about the camera raw filter. Make sure you check it out if you're not, like, not really good in the camera raw. The clarity is up to taste. Some people like to reduce it, make it soft. Some people like to increase it. In this case, I believe increasing it is better because we have like a lot of textures. It looks good. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm going to go to the FX module. Maybe I'll dehaze everything a little bit, make things like clearer. Add a little bit of vignette. Now it's a little bit dark. I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit, make it brighter. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the part where I color the photo. It's the camera calibration. You can like make it like more purple and yellow or make it more red and cyan. You can play around, like keep playing around with these ones until you get the best effect. I always like to pull the blue primary to the left a little bit. And then if I wanted orange, I'm going to do this. It will be more orange. If I want it to stay reddish, I'm going to move it a little bit to the right. So I'm going to just... Reduce the effect a little bit. Something like that is good. And I'm going to press OK. So now this is like after the camera row filter. I'm going to press Ctrl Z. This is before the camera row filter. And this is after the camera row filter. You can always add like adjustments if you want to like emphasize the color here and there. You can add a new layer. Pick a brush. Pick this color maybe. Make it a little bit brighter. Take the gradient tool with the normal gradient, you can pull something like that. And then take a different opposite color here, make it a little bit darker. And you can pull from here. That's too strong, I guess. I'll reduce the opacity. Something like that, then you can change it to overlay or soft light. This will create some sort of variation in your photo, like the left side will have a color, the right side will have another color. Let's make it more subtle, something like that is good. Okay, that's it for today's tutorial. If you have any comments or suggestions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys.